Hi everyone, uh, I want to talk a little bit about unmanaged memory uh, and what that means and how to diagnose it and why it's commonly a problem. So oftentimes people run into a problem where uh, they've run out of memory or peers or clusters run out of memory, but don't know why. And often this actually isn't uh, your code's fault, it's not Dask's fault, it's actually how Python interacts with the operating system. So this video will tell you how to identify that uh, with Dask and how to, how to fix it or how to address it. Uh, I'm working off of a great blog post written by uh, Guido Imperiale about this topic and some of the recent work that he's done. But we're going to play with uh, a simple example uh, and see how it comes up uh, in practice. So on the left, I've got some Python code. On the right, I've got a DAS dashboard. On the left, we've uh, created a software environment with basic vanilla Dask. I'm also using Git, Git main. You don't have to. Everything's uh, released recently. And I've started a cluster on GCP with about 40 machines. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a uh, make a data frame with some random data. Dask has this uh, data sets time series function, which just creates data with random uh, random elements in it. And what we're going to do as a test example is we're going to sort this data frame by the x column, which is currently random. So we're going to kick that off and start that going. So while we're shipping that graph up to the scheduler, uh, we're going to look a little bit at, so the center, we can see all the activity happening on the cluster. Oh, let me, I forgot an import. Uh, and then on, on the left, we're seeing here, uh, this chart here showing the number of bytes that we're using on every worker. Uh, and so you can see that as we're doing more work, we're using more memory, uh, we can see all that those numbers added up here. And I want to in particular point you to the, the different shades of color that are that are here. Uh, this is actually all explained really, really well in Guido's blog post. It talks about this plot. It talks about what these different meet, what these different systems mean, and uh, very specifically what each each shading represents. It's really important if you want to really understand um, managed and unmanaged memory. But mostly, what I want you to see is that it looks like we're using around 79 gigabytes of space. But if you look at our data set, we can go look at um, what our data set's actually using. It's actually only like 26 gigabytes in, in, in RAM. Uh, and so there's a lot of, of unmanaged data that is taking up space on our, our clusters, uh, but isn't, uh, isn't actually, we're not responsible for. So if we look at that summary, it looks like Dask knows and Dask is managing around 26 gigabytes of space. But overall, we're using 79 gigabytes. So that, that difference, that you know, 30 or 40 gigabytes, is uh, it's being used by something else. We're not quite sure what. So that's what we mean when we say unmanaged memory. It's memory that is, is resident on our processes, but that we're actually not responsible for. It turns out a lot of the times this is due to just the way the operating system tends to, to keep memory around uh, as, a, as, a, as an efficiency uh, trick. There are a variety of ways to reduce that memory if you want. I'm look at the distributed Dask documentation and look for trim. So here's a nice little code snippet I can run. And as I run that, we should see that memory uh, be released back to the system. So this, this lighter shade of purple should go back and should be released back. And our total memory used should also be reduced. As you can see, it was nicely sort of bought pulled back. Not all the way, right? We're still using some memory for things like the libraries that we've imported or, or other data that the pandas might be storing in global variables, for example. So it doesn't release all the memory back, but it's still a significant amount. So again, you can identify uh, unmanaged memory by these, these shades, these bars that are of a lighter shade of, of purple out beyond the dark purple. The dark purple is what Dask is responsible for. Now, what's nice is that we can also do this automatically. So in this same document, there's this recommendation that you can automatically trim memory by using the malloc trim threshold environment variable. This is used by, by the, the C function malloc, which allocates memory. So we need to set this environment variable before we create our cluster uh, in each of our Dask workers. So I'm actually make a new cluster and I'm going to add uh, the an environment variable to all of my uh, workers, and I'm going to set that to some 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 value that's uh, a little bit smaller. 
like just you know a couple a couple of bytes of space, uh, and we're gonna, we're gonna make that. Uh, I've actually already made this cluster for you. It takes cool well, like a couple minutes to spin up a cluster, so I don't want to wait for that. Uh, we're gonna connect our client up to that cluster, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do the exact same computation. And hopefully, we're going to watch this bytes stored graph again. And hopefully, we're going to see that there's going to be less of that light purple color that, that corresponds to sort of this waste. We also want to check, so our data set is, you know, like 25, 30 gigabytes in size. Uh, how much memory do we need to have uh, in order to, to sort a data set of that size? It's going to be larger than the data set size, but hopefully, it's only about a factor of two is the hope. So we're watching, watching this number. Hopefully it gets, you know, not so much above 60. And we're also looking at this plot and seeing that these bars are only, you know, 20%, 30% beyond the, the darker bars, rather than, you know, twice as long or three times as long the way that they were before. So what all of this means is that we're able to do these large operations, like a sort, like a shuffle, with less memory. So we can be either we can operate on larger data set sizes, or we can use less hardware and be more efficient and cheaper in our computation. And so we, we really achieved that here, right? The, the amount that we've wasted here is, is much less than we were wasting before. And so again, we can, we can use Dask a bit more efficiently than previously. Let's actually try our trimming trick before, the sort of the manual approach here. And let's see if we get any, any benefit. Yeah, we shaved off a few gigabytes, but not much, right? So again, uh, I'm gonna recommend that you go and check out this blog post, uh, Tackling Unmanaged Memory with Dask. And in particular, if you're, if you're deploying Dask yourself, uh, you might wanna consider changing the system defaults on, on trimming memory. Uh, it just makes sort of Dask and your system in Python, all those things work a little bit more smoothly together. So that's it. Thanks for your time. I hope you learned something.